Good morning. Mr. Bruce. It is I. How are you? Good morning, sir. Thank you so much. I was <laughs> I was looking at my my email just to make sure. I'm like, mm -hmm. is it eleven a.m. there? And is it nine <laughs> <in> here? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm uh, a little no, behind no. this morning. No, 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 no. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you so much. I I am. I'm a little beside myself, to be honest with you, sir. <laughs> and I, I, will, I will say that I apologize for a lot of the sirs that are going to be coming out of my mouth right now. Oh, Bruce is just fine. Bruce, Bruce is just is fine. Bruce is just fine. And yes, Chris, yes. Actually, no, just call me Z. Z. Z? All right. Z. Well, Z it is. Because you actually see my name there. So we're just going to go Z. Great. But, uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I, I know you're very busy and for myself having this moment happen right now not only are you behind me over here I see that yeah yeah <laughs> you're right there, there. I'm right there <laughs> <laughs> but again no thank you so much um I know I want to be very respectful of your time um but one of the first things I do want to say is from the moment I started covering Star Trek Strange New Worlds and I saw your trailer, I was very intrigued mm. with, with that character because I didn't know a lot of the background, obviously, because of the character trailers. Yeah. But then when started, the information started to come out. Yeah. And then I saw the first episode when you came in. Mm. I was sold. Great. That that <laughs> I said this in in one of the questions I have, but I'll say it now. Any of the scenes that you have been in, mm -hmm. it's felt very weighted. Weighted. Okay. Weighted. Okay. And yeah, yeah. Because it it you have these short lines, but you mm -hmm. fill the the lines there with such oomph. <laughs> Well, thank you. I, I I owe that to the the writers, really. The writer. <laughs> but um, so uh, just to let you know what we're going to be doing, of course, mm -hmm. obviously, I do have a set of questions. Okay. And right now, you are on what I call the bridge. My bridge, Great. Mm -hmm. which is known as the Twitch Bridge and YouTube Bridge. Uh -huh. So we have my fellow captains watching this live right now okay great mm -hmm. but uh first question i did are they are they uh are they are other are people also going to be writing in or we're we just going to go directly you and i look we're not answering uh comments or anything like that so it's you and i uh -huh. um when i got the email from your manager chris yeah one i had to change my shirt because I was, <laughs> I, ha I was immediately going, oh, what? Is this real life? <laughs> what? what? Um, well, I, I really, I, I, I said to Chris, actually, that uh, with two things, I, I really appreciated that you reached out, first of all, because most people, they, you know, they, they sort of just, they, either they assume that, that, we're, that I'm unapproachable or that there's, you know, sort of the echelon that you have to go through CBS or Paramount or whatever. And also that you mentioned you were from Calgary. So immediately I'm like, of course, I'm going to, I mean, that's, that's the hometown. You got the hometown advantage right there. So people reach out from Calgary. They're, they kind of move directly to top of the list. So <laughs> this is why we have to make it happen because, you know, Calgary. Oh my God. And, <laughs> thank, and so there's something that I do in the videos that I do for YouTube that when I get mm -hmm. excited, and I hope you'll allow me and I forgive you. you may have to like mute yourself a little bit because when you said Calgary, yes, usually what I would say in an excited part of my video is, yes, let's go. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Sorry. Yeah. I had to love I, it. Love I, it. I had to, but, um, for the most part, what you said about the, it's not necessarily unapproachable, but it's just, you're there, you know, you're in the Star Trek. This is the thing that we love as fans. And yes. it's so, it's, it's so Me hard. Too. It's so <laughs> hard to 
just I don't know what compelled me. I just but when I knew that you were from Calgary, I'm like, okay, well, there's got to be something to that, right? Like, there's just, just for sure, got to be something yeah. to that. But um, one of the first questions, though, I do want to ask. Mm-hmm. And yes, there are some questions, like I was saying before, there are some questions that I have asked the both the captains on Twitch and YouTube to send in. So I do have mm-hmm. some of that. Oh, great, great. I do have some of that definitely, and one of them. For me, though, is what I want to start with is I would like you to tell me about yourself. Tell us about who and how. So how do you, how do you say your last name? Horak. Horak. Yeah, Bruce okay. Horak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can tell you about myself. Sure. I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta. Um, I was uh, 18 months of age when I was diagnosed with bilateral retinoblastoma, which is cancer of the eyes. So my right eye was removed and my left eye um, was blasted with radiation. So they killed the tumors that were on my retina, but scar tissue developed over the whole eye. So I have a very, very narrow window. It's like looking down a straw, basically, is how I see. And then I had a cataract developed when I was four and a half. So the lens started to cloud over. So I had cataract surgery, which is something you hear about, like your grandparents going for cataract surgery, but I was four and a half <laughs> when I had that done. So they removed the lens. So I had to wear like really heavy bifocal glasses for most of my life. Um, I was in about grade 11, I think, when they finally fitted me for a contact lens. Um But the prescription on my lens, it's ridiculous. It's like a plus 15 or something like that. Uh, Huge. So, um, but that was my normal. I I, I lived with 9% vision and continue to live with 9% vision my whole life. Um, I went to uh, what they call integrated school. So back in the day, back in the 80s, the early 80s, when I was going into elementary school, there was a a shifting away from what they, they used to send uh, kids who were blind or visually impaired off to separate schools. Uh, the W. Ross McDonald School in Ontario is one of them, which still operates to this day. And it's a school for blind and deafblind kids. Um, but I went to a regular school. I'm the youngest of four boys, so I have three older brothers. And, you know, they just helped me keep up, basically. They taught me to ride a bike. We learned to play soccer. Uh, and I went to a regular school. So, And I had uh, all sorts of assistive technology which well i mean it was kind of, it's an amazing time to be alive because the technology just keeps getting more and more advanced so by the time i graduated from high school we were using computers i i learned to type when i was in grade three so i was so far advanced in my typing skills i had a little telescope so i could read the chalkboard um and i just yeah i just figured out pretty early on and was told honestly that it's a sighted world it's not built for blind kids, so you got to figure out how to fit in. you got to work. You're going to have to work twice as hard just to keep up. So that became a bit of a, you know, a modus operandi, if you will, of just figuring out ways to adapt, figuring out ways to fit in. Um, and when I finally got to get rid of the Coke bottle glasses, which, I mean, it was just obvious when I would wear them that, oh, the, the kid can't see very well. But as soon as I got rid of the Coke bottle glasses and got my contact lens, I figured out ways to look like a fully sighted person. And that just became my way of operating probably for most of my twenties and early thirties. Um, I really hid the fact that I'm visually impaired as best I could. Um, you know, I would do absolutely everything in my power to, to hide it. So I would, uh, when I was doing a play, for instance, I would memorize all my lines before the first day so I wouldn't have to read. Because if I have to read text, I got to hold it this close. But I would get off book as soon as possible so that I would just know the lines. Um, and I would go in early and I would learn a space so that I wouldn't be bumping into stuff and, you know, kind of figure out all these adaptive ways of maneuvering. Uh, I self produce a lot of my own work. So I started writing, I started acting when I was in elementary, junior high, high school. Um, and I got into what's called the fringe festival circuit in Canada. So we would, uh, some friends of mine, uh, started the theater company in the early two thousands. And we would just every summer write shows and tour them across the country. Did that for probably 15 years. Uh, I'm actually going back to my roots and doing another one this summer and doing another fringe show, which is, yeah, it's just, that's my joy uh, being on stage, um, entertaining, doing music, writing, composing, painting, 
whatever I can. I, I, I jokingly say that I'll do anything to keep from getting a real job. <laughs> How's that for a short bio, Z? <laughs> so we're, we're going to clip that part. <laughs> we're we're going to clip that part. No, that, that is awesome. And, you know, when you, when you were talking about that, what was coming to mind was you really push yourself to, I don't want to say fit in, but to the point where you made it so that your talent shone through as opposed to what you had kind of to stop you, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it, it's been a real, um, I guess it's, it, it, it's been a bit of a challenge of, um, because for for a long time, I, I thought that um, you know having a disability was going to stop me from getting work. That I would be pigeonholed, or that people would would have all sorts of uh, preconceptions about what I can and can't do. And that's that's been true to a certain degree. But I'd say the last um, the last little while in my creative output, I've been embracing my disability more and and putting it more in the forefront. And what I've found. Um, is that uh, there's a deeper connection with the audience because there are so many people that have that that have disabilities that when they see a, another person with a disability out there making a go of it and making it work and um, you know maybe shattering some of those stereotypes they they get excited about it and they they immediately connect and um, you know you just you have that that connection with the audience that just runs a bit deeper. And what I've recognized certainly coming out of the pandemic is like people really, really need to connect. We really just have an innate human desire to connect and to be, to see and be seen. And oddly, uh, you know, as a person with a visual impairment, it's like I have this incredible platform and opportunity to see <laughs> and be seen and, and connect with people. And, Unintended. Um, yeah, but through, <laughs> but 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 just th purely through, um, you know, the honesty and the and the uh, what's what's the word? I, I guess just you know the, the 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 rawness of of being who I am and just not being afraid to be who I am. And there's no there's no benefit really to hiding it. I can disappear behind three and a half hours of prosthetic work and, and, you know, my face can, can change and I can act and, and, and transform myself into these other characters. But off of that, off of the, the sort of, uh, produced, uh, incredibly well-crafted thing of Star Trek, it's like when I'm just being myself, there's absolutely no reason why I need to, I need, need to hide my disability or, uh, or denigrated or anything like that. It, it's part of who I am, um, but it's also not all that I am. And if I'm not mistaken, it mm. actually helped you get the role. Oh, it certainly did. When they were when the, the call went out, when the casting call went out, looking for for the, an actor to play the role of Hammer, they were specifically asking for actors who were blind or, or legally blind to uh, to audition. So, being that is true of me and also being that it's star trek i it was a no-brainer to put my hat in the ring for that because i'm a bit of a star trek fan myself just 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 a bit just just a little <laughs> yeah uh no a lot a lot a lot of, a lot of a star trek fan yeah yeah okay so i was hoping this would this would come to this so i have a set of questions that okay. are meant to be just whatever is the first thing that comes to your mind. So kind of right. like hot shot question. So are you ready? It's about Star yeah. Trek. Okay. Okay. Favorite series. Currently my favorite series is Strange New Worlds. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm so loving it. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway. You can wait to life fanboy. Um, favorite ship? <laughs> ship. Oh, Voyager. Oh, mm, okay. Favorite captain? Kirk. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you, you had to... Wait, I work with him, but... <laughs> no, I'm glad. I mean, really, in my heart, he was he's my first captain. 
Ooh, okay, perfect. Uh, favorite number one. Oh, oh. Favorite number one. Mm. Yeah, I, I just thought Riker was awesome. <laughs> it's the beard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And favorite, the way he sat down. Right? Oh my gosh. That leg <laughs> over everything. Just, just yeah. make sure, hey, just to let you know, I'm taller than everyone. So I'll just. Yeah. Uh, favorite medical doctor. Oh, uh, the the hologram from Voyager. Did he have a name? He had a name in the in the final episode. Oh my god, I love the episode where the Doctor on Voyager had a whole family. It was just so beautiful. Anyway, yeah, he, uh, Robert Beltran. No, that's not the actor. That's it. That's that. That's 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 Chakotay. What was the actor's name? Oh my god, I can't even remember. Now, now anyway, now the hologram. His, his name is Joe. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, of all the names that you could pick, you pick Joe. Of all the names that you could pick, Joe. <laughs> sure. Buddy. So good. So good. Okay. Favorite tactical officer. Tactical officer. Didn't see that one coming, huh? I didn't. <laughs> was was Chekhov on tactical? Or he was one of the pilots. It, no, uh, he he did, sat it. Yeah, I don't know. You got me. <laughs> I'd say Chekhov. <laughs> you kind of got if, if me too, but but we'll 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 say Chekhov. He he fired okay. some he fired some nuclear weapons or something. Um, <laughs> nuclear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he Earl Grey or black coffee. He Earl Grey hot. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, black coffee. Is- oh no, no, I would drink. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an Earl Grey drinker for sure. Yeah. All right. Favorite species. Tribbles. Or- Tribble. Okay. <laughs> In my question here, I said favorite se- species, and then I said duh, like what? Of course, the Enar, but <laughs> the Enar. <Enoch. laughs> Tribble. Tribble. Everybody okay. wants a treble. This one's gonna be hard. Your favorite engineer? I, you know, I, I generally gravitate towards Trip Tucker, but oh. um, just because honestly, I watched I watched that series Enterprise at a at a really kind of seminal moment in my life. So I have a lot of emotional attachment to that sh- series in particular. Um, so yeah, I, I I lean towards Trip Tucker, and I I thought his death was uh, sort of spoilers. Um, it was just it was it was so like just the way he winked at the end, and he went in, and there was just this like great camaraderie, and then the way that it obviously affected everyone on the ship, but also it was like I wanted I wanted another season of that show just just to sort of wrap up a bit of the grieving process because it it really was like wrenching. Um, but I mean, Scotty was was he's a genius. I mean, really, <laughs> the whole like overestimating how much time it's going to take to do something and then doing it in half the time. It's great. No, that thing, Scotty. <laughs> I think I still do it. I still do that. I, to yeah, be that'll honest, take me a week. I, to be honest, I thought you were going to say you, but oh no, 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 <laughs> I can't. I mean, I I'm certainly uh, watching Strange New Worlds just because it's been a year since we shot the thing, so finally seeing it all together. And, and and how, you know, it's, you don't, for me, doing theater, um, you get, it, it all, like, it's an instant feedback of whether it's working and whether people are enjoying it. And, and then, you know, it's like, it's, 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 it's gone. Like the thing that the moment has passed where his film is forever, but, and you kind of wait forever to figure out like, is this working and what's the feedback going to be? And, and then not only that, but I'm kind of watching it by myself. So there's no like (laughs) crowd response or anything. You kind of got to go online to figure out, is this any good? Um, But just from the first time I saw it, I'm like, wow, it, it looks great. It sounds great. The stories are compelling. Like, I think, uh, you know, as a long, long time fan of the sh- of the franchise, uh, what they've done with the show is, yeah, it's really satisfying. It's really satisfying. Um, but no, I, I, I don't think that uh, just in, in my Canadian humility, I could ever say that. that uh, <laughs> right. That no. hammer is my favorite. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you know that's gonna get clipped and gonna be taken out of context that you said hammer's your favorite okay okay so there you go um i'm gonna edit that no i'm just kidding um so the last question here mm-hmm. your favorite episode and why it resonated with you episode of any show or of any. of string of anything oh well I, yeah it's it's still for me it's so funny because my girlfriend has never seen a, a, a single episode of any Star Trek. And as we were sort of ramping up to watch Strange New Worlds, which she's watched it all with me. But before that, I was like, I got to show you one episode. What would it be? And so I showed her uh, Inner Light from Next Generation where Picard goes off and, and has his whole other life and the little flute at the end. And I mean, it's just such... A, it's great storytelling. It's great sci-fi. Uh, and then just that sort of feeling at the end of, um, I don't know what the word is, but it's a very bittersweet episode. And also Patrick Stewart, just his performance in it is fantastic. It's so good. It's no, so good. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So that one, that one leaps out. And I also, I'd say a, a close second would be, um, the 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 final episode of Next Generation, which I think it's called All Good Things, mm. where they're jumping around, where he's jumping around in time. The season finale, yeah. yeah that's, the series finale, yeah. yeah. Well, series finale, yeah. and where we saw the one of my favorite ships that became my favorite ships, the uh, Galaxy X. Excuse me, with a lance, make something better, put a lance on it. Yeah. And <laughs> yes. Yes. Make it make it shred the uh, Klingons, but no, that that's awesome. And and just to let you know, mm-hmm. so for me, fave fave series TNG, fave ship Galaxy, fave Cap, Picard, fave number one Riker, fave yeah. engineer. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. Uh, fave medical, it have to be. I'd say Beverly. Can you see uh, TNG here? It is, Fave, yeah, yeah. Fave tactical. <laughs> I'm gonna give it up to Worf. I grew up with TNG. That's just mm-hmm. period, point blank, and that's why it's yeah. there. And that's why when you when you said resonated or connected with that, I use that a lot. And yeah, in that I say because it's just the memory that's etched into you, right? Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. And, and I think for so many of the fans that I have been encountering. Uh, yeah, it, it goes back to how old they were and who they watched it with. <laughs> like, yeah. I was this this I was this age, and I watched it with you know dad, mom, whatever. And for me, it was the original series. The family would gather, and we'd sit in the family room around the old TV and have popcorn. And we had a pet rabbit who would come and eat popcorn with us. And we'd all watch Shatner and and friends just chew the scenery. And uh, yeah, it, it that that just locked in there. And then again with. Um, with Enterprise, uh, I was in Portland, Oregon. I was doing an artist residence. I had this really great studio, and I just had it playing in the background while I was working. And um, you know, I'd kind of stop and I'd listen to the music, and it was like, ah, oh, God, like why, why this horrible theme song? <laughs> skip it and skip intro. Uh, but the the stories are great, and also Scott Bakula. I mean, I was a huge Quantum Leap fan. Uh, and again, that show just kind of landed. It was another one that, that the family would watch. So it was, it was like, it was like, you know, Doctor Sam Beckett got to pilot a, a starship. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's you, wonderful. Sh- you should you should read into all the uh, theories the um, that connect quantum fe- quantum to enterprise. Oh, and this the of he, course. He, the whole you know the rat. There's a rabbit hole. I've yet I've I've yet to delve into it, but I've been told some, but. I love this idea that he's actually Dr. Sam Beckett has leapt into right? Jonathan Archer. <laughs> and, he, and he's just kind of like, hmm. um, so for the last two, T Earl Grey, my mom got me into mommy Triz, got me into that. Uh-huh. Fave, oh, sorry. Last three fave species. I would have to go the trill. The, oh yeah. The, the, they they kind of are kind of really interesting to me when, you yeah. have this symbiotic relationship, but this or that kind of lives through as long as the host lives. You know, it, it's I, that's really cool to me. And of course, you got Dax from that, so I love. Yeah, Dax. yeah, yeah. Um, and my favorite episode that really hit me was 
so far. Barring last night when I watched episode eight, <laughs> um, was Survivors from TNG. Remember that? And now you have to remind me what happens in Survivors. So that is the one, that's the alien that created his own little plot of land with his deceased wife because he took out a whole alienation of the Husnuck and it re the reason why it more resonated with me because I actually especially now actually later in my age is I found out that his wife in real life died before doing that episode so he was oh. very emotional and not in more like you know when he was talking even as a kid i was like wow that that's that's hitting a little hard so survivors is one of my favorite mm, mm. episodes and um definitely um my goodness it's almost already like so we have 12 minutes left again i want to be okay. very respectful of the time <laughs> so i'm gonna ask these questions sir and because you've already actually went into a, oh bruce sorry bruce Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you, you actually made a comment there that made me laugh. You have a pet rabbit? We did, yeah, had, yeah. Yes? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Captains. Yeah. Hammer. Bruce has pet rabbits. Lay off on mine. Okay, the same. Uh, <laughs> um, so, the, so I guess in the last little bit here, I, I'm just going to let you go at it. And how did you get into the Star Trek what type of research did you have to do for Star Trek for your character? And how long does it take you to get into makeup? How did I get into Star Trek? Well, I, I touched on that a little bit. It was a, it was a family tradition. Um, mm -hmm. My father was an English teacher and a drama teacher, etc. But he got his master's degree. Uh, he wrote a thesis on teaching science fiction in high school. So he was a huge nerd and a huge fan of sci-fi and all of that. So I really owe it to, to my dad um, and family viewing. And, and when Next Generation came out, it was, you know, we were all doing high kicks and super excited that that the the franchise had been reborn again on television. I mean, I was a, just a fan all the way through, really. Um, kept up with, with it as it was all airing. I, I lost interest a little bit i'd say in my 20s just as i was getting into other stuff but came right back around when i had that trip to portland and got back into enterprise and uh just totally thrilling at it when um the role came out and i recognized that they were casting an enar i went back and rewatched the enar introduction episodes in enterprise just to see if there was anything i could steal um <laughs> uh I, I use that word steal, um, get it to, to try, try to get away with, um, <laughs> just in, in terms of the physicality and the way that the, that the actors were moving. Um, because yeah, it's this weird kind of thing about their telepathic abilities. I mean, they basically evolved that, that the telepathy has evolved to such a extent that they no longer need their eyes. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's an organ that's just kind of become redundant, if if you will. So I dug a bit of it around in that. I went on to a lot of the fan sites. Um, Memory Alpha is one that I I go to a lot actually, just to pick up because it's so extensive and 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 the cross references are really great. Um, yeah, so I dug into that. I dug into as much from the script as I could. I mean, there's. There's not a lot of references. There's not a lot to to pull out about his backstory or anything like that. So, I mean, kind of the, the sky was the limit. And then the makeup and prosthetics themselves took uh, three and a half hours to apply. Um, there were two technicians, two two artists that, uh, that worked. Two technicians. And, yeah, <laughs> two guys. Uh, Alan Cook and Shane Zander were the primary people who worked on me every day on the, on the series. And uh, they were one or both of them was with me throughout the whole day to do touch ups and between takes they would come in and adjust and re glue and paint and all of that. Um, and then at the end of the day it was a full hour to get all of the stuff off and scrub all the makeup and uh, and be done with it. So, wow. you know, on on top of you know what were sometimes 12, 14 hour days of shooting, there was another four and a half hours in uh, in the makeup chair. Right. 
Right. Wow. Which is probably why I don't appear that much. <laughs> it's like this this one character takes forever, so we'll just or, or a little standoffish and grumpy at times because it took three <laughs> hours. Um, and the, I, you see, I know we only have ten minutes left, but the the things that. I, like I said earlier, how your scenes are so weighted. It made me want more. Like the right. last six episodes, six and seven, when you weren't there, I was like, where, 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 where is where, he? Where, 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 where is he? <laughs> now yeah. it only takes three hours to put the makeup on, not two episodes. Let's go. <laughs> uh, but then yesterday's episode eight, mm. the, when mm-hmm. I watched it, I will say, one question I want to get out. Was there anyone whose face was leaking? Because mine was. At the uh, end there, my face was leaking. Like, mm. I, I, I have a daughter. And the connection, and you talk about it earlier here, with all of your characters, I've been able to connect with each and every one of you on Strange New Worlds. Each at a different level. Mm. And it the relationship that I see on screen, it looks so real. Like, I mean, it's real. I can feel it. And the Strange New World Star Trek series, everything from one to eight, I've just been, if I could record my face while I'm watching it, it would not be pretty. I'll tell you that right now. But it feels so real. And maybe lastly, mm-hmm. can you let us know to you, what that's meant to, to, to be in this crew of this flagship series now of Paramount. Yeah, it's, um, it's meant everything to me. It's, um, you know, it's the culmination of a lot of, uh, different threads of my career. Um, certainly a love of good storytelling and science fiction to be, uh, on the bridge of the enterprise. I mean, I, I, Honestly, like if I if I was to go back like twenty years and talk to my younger self and say, "Hey, listen, you're gonna you're gonna be on that ship," it, I, I don't know that I would have believed it. Um, it's yeah, it's an extraordinary thing. And then beyond that, the you know, I, I had a, a great fear of doing film and TV because of just the, the sheer enormous enormity of it, but also. Um, you know, as someone who's blind or visually impaired to walk onto those sets, I thought, oh, this is going to be really dangerous. There's going to be cables everywhere. There's stuff going to be flying around. Like, I'm I'm not going to be safe at all in this environment. And the exact opposite is true. The, the production crew and everyone around is so incredibly generous and aware. And, you know, anytime that I need a, a helping hand, it's it's right there. Uh, from the moment that I get picked up in the morning to like get dropped off at the end of the day, it's just you've got somebody there who's got your back, and everyone who works on that show is working at the top of their game, and I think it really shows. You know, there's no, there's no moment that I ever feel like, oh, this is, you know, they're they're just doing this so that they can get the thing in the can. It's like, no, you're gonna, you're gonna get the takes that you need, you're gonna get the time that you need, and you're gonna get the support that you need in order to do your absolute best work, and I feel that. And uh, every every single person on that show is just working. It's the it's a games all around, and you know I think that's that's really come as a result of where the show, the genesis of the show, came from, which was the the love of the fans. And when they when the fans called for they want a series with Pike <laughs> and Una and Spock, uh, it's this, this is the result of it, and. Uh, they're they're listening the writers are listening the creative people are listening to what the fans are saying and and you know i mean i can't imagine a harder job than writing for star trek because it's like the magnifying glass comes up to absolutely everything it's like well yes it, if hammer could block out the alien then why couldn't spock well hammer hammer the enar have a much more advanced form of telepathy yeah but what about when he's only half human and so you do all these all these beautiful hilarious um you know, uh, <laughs> rabbit holes and comment sections, which I, I actually kind of enjoy. I mean, mm-hmm. thankfully none of them have, have gotten personal, but they're, they're the, the love of this series and the love of the franchise is just, it just pours out. And what a, what a beautiful thing to, to walk into. And from the moment that it was announced that 
that I was on the show, the messages I got were just welcome to the family. And what feels better than that? That that is, I mean, again, it, it's coming across the screen. It really does, and it, the genuinity it. of genuinity is that a word? Sure. That's a word. It and is sure. not. Okay, yeah, no, we're doing that. Um, <laughs> it, like I said, the, the connections and for, for myself, I've cr- I've cried, I've laughed, I've smiled, I went, oh, huh? I, I, I've every emotion, every reaction. That can happen has happened so far, and we still Great. have two episodes left. So far, I mean, you know what's happening, but I mean. <laughs> uh, my lips are sealed. I know, I know. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, just that's what I mean. Every episode, and I love the self-containment. Mm. And the, you're right; they've listened, and to me, it's harkened back to my childhood. I'm just brought back to a place of just a sense of wonder: what's going to happen? Even the mm. pacing is just on point. You're going back right. and forth between scenes, but it's just on point. And right. I absolutely, and I guess one more question. One more question. Yeah. How long does it take to do Pike's hair? Oh, that's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> there are memes happening and it's hilarious. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pike's peak. I love it. <laughs> Pike's peak and everything. But uh, I know we had some more now. Again, I am so thankful for this opportunity. And my I pleasure. I have another opportunity because there's a lot of questions that we weren't able to get through. But again, I want to be very respectful of your time. And if anything, is it possible for you to be in your character of Hammer to say mm. something about Triz, T R I Z, some sort of comment, whether. <clears throat> Almost like a comment you made to Ahura saying, hey, Cadet Triz, or something like that, that we can sort of keep here on the YouTube log. Uh, it would just be audio. It'd just be audio. Just be audio. Triz? Hmm. Uh, uh, gosh, you, you got me. You got yes. me. Yes! <laughs> yes, Triz, you got me. How's that? <laughs> Yes, that's cool. Yes, okay, that works. And it just came out there to just because I actually got you twice, three times, twice, three times. Uh, oh yeah, at least. No, um, it's good. Keep me on my toes. I like it. Yes, uh, Bruce. Again, thank you so much. I I hope my pleasure. Um, you don't mind if I reach out again to you? Uh, it, it, anytime. Yeah. Um, and anytime. then when you're in Calgary next, we gotta go. Yeah, I'll be in. I'll be in Calgary in. Uh, the beginning of October doing a show for the Shakespeare company. Mm. Mm, okay. You might get an email maybe. Just, Perfect. Just saying. Just saying. And Perfect. then we'll Love it. steak and bubble tea. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what a combination that was. Um, one last thing, Bruce, again, thank you so much. My pleasure. Can we, can we get a live long can, and prosper? Can we get an LLAP again? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, maybe about a salute to our captains here on the Twitch and YouTube bridge. Thank you so much again for your time, sir. Take care. We love this Anytime. series. You take care. Thank and you. We'll talk to you in the future. Thanks. You betcha. Bye now. Do you think this is my dude?